them. Nice. Okay. That's right. Good morning, everyone. It is good to be here. It is good to be with you this morning and see you. So um, I am kind of like recycling my word from today because I did this with the youth a few weeks ago and it was a great time. So if you are a youth on a few weeks ago on Thursday, I apologize. Um, but it was a great day. I was like, it's something that we all need to do together and practice. So, but that week particularly, so that was, I don't remember when, uh, when I had to share, I, it didn't really, it was not a great week for me. I felt a little bit ugh, low and tired and unmotivated and just a bit beat by life. Um, have you ever felt like that? But then uh, I go to the rota and it was me down to share and the title that I wrote back in December when I made the rota for youth was being grateful when you don't feel like it. And I was like, oh, great. I am going to share this week. And I think in hindsight, obviously, it was a perfect time for me to share about being grateful when you don't feel like it because I think sharing about being grateful when you don't feel like it, when I was in a very good mood, would have been just a bunch of like, oh, hey, be grateful, even when you feel low. But then I really had to get myself in a place of gratefulness when I didn't feel like it in, a, in order to share with them. And I debated maybe changing the topic for that week, but I was like, no, it goes in with all the other topics. And so, but the truth is I really didn't feel it that week. Uh, nothing in me was, woo. And I love to woo. But in that moment, I was like, okay, I chose to spend some time praying. And choosing to pray when you don't feel like it, I found that it's the mo one of the most powerful praying times. Because it, the choosing to pray and the choosing to spend time, the choosing to raise my voice, the choosing to look at something else when I didn't feel like it kind of broke through it. So as I was praying, I got this picture of two images coming together and only making sense when they are both together. But So I, we're gonna watch a quick video of explaining this concept, because I think it does a better job than I do. ...for the audience. Images appear to fill the empty space between the moviegoers and the screen, often with startling results. All of them rely on your brain's binocular vision system, which takes 2D images from each eye combines them in a way that lets you perceive depth and distance. Let's take these colorful cardboard glasses that most people associate with 3D movies. Each pair has one red lens and another that's cyan. The red lens lets one eye see only red images. The cyan lens picks up only bluish green images. On screen, you're presented with two slightly offset images that were filmed separately. One is red, the other is cyan. When you're wearing your 3D glasses, each eye sees only one of those images. Your brain takes the information from the red image and from the cyan image and puts it together to create a three-dimensional picture. Um, if you've gone to see a 3D movie at least once in your life, you know what he's talking about. You put the, when you take them off, you're always tempted to take them off, aren't you? To see what would it look like. And it doesn't really make sense. It kind of looks a bit blurry. It doesn't, but when you put the glasses on, um, only then it makes sense. Those two things, those two images, the separate kind of make sense, but not really, only together make sense. And I love that explanation of how they work and how he explained that the two separate images, your brain takes each one of them separately and then puts them together. Our brain is quite amazing, isn't it? Um, and it got me thinking um, that we can often look at how we feel in an either or way. Um, but I love that image of seeing the two things side by side and only together making sense. So this morning I want to share about the reality of how things are and the reality of how sometimes we feel and the other side of it, which is choosing to call to mind or choosing to remember. Um, because as important as it is to talk about our feelings and be real of them and express them and share them, and I'm not trying to take away from the importance of it. It is very important to be aware of where you are, where you're feeling, share it. And I'm not minimizing our feeling as they are very 
important and very real in that moment. But we often forget how important it is to call to mind the truth, to speak it and not allow to t the feelings to take over. Um, because I think we're often thinking in an either or mindset. If this is true, then this can be true. If I'm having a bad week, therefore I can't speak on gratefulness to the young people. If I had a bad night's sleep, therefore I'm going to have a good day. This either or. We like to separate things and box things rather than allowing them and holding both things at the same time. We have an outlook of life of if this is true, then it applies in this being not true. Um, but if you read in Lamentations, the first three and a half chapters of Lamentations, I mean, the book name should kind of give away, but we see that Jeremiah, it's just he goes on and on about his feelings and how bad he's got it. You can tell the intensity of his feelings. We're going to read some of them in a minute. But if you read these chapters, you might believe that he serves the worst, most crowd in the universe. There is no worse than Jobs. Some of the things that he says are so intense and so filled with pain and frustration. And he goes on and on. For three hours, he's been very honest. No doubt about that. He feels hard, though. But he's now speaking to his that are not reflecting reality. What he says does not reflect reality. It was, and you can tell, like, I'm sure you have um, someone that feels very intense and very strong. I'm only laughing because most of you have for me, of very strong feelings. But when you speak out of those with nothing else, you are not reflecting reality. Jeremiah was not reflecting reality. And I believe that it's a very important distinction that we must make between my feelings, and they are real, but they don't always reflect reality. And God's truth, and God and his heart. And I might myself in a similar place a few weeks ago, where the feelings and emotions were, I was experiencing and were very, very true to me. And speaking out of them without making a distinction. And I was saying things, what I was saying was not reality. And with my words, I was eating an environment around me that was based on the feelings rather than reality, which meant, which only meant I live in reality. And I think reality is there, reality out of reality. And I believe it's reality. How everything not that I see is reality. Because this is what the intensity of feeling can happen. And shit happened when I was able to deal with the feelings, which were real, heard, and understood by everyone around me. And the reality actually around me. Only when I was able to do those two things side by side, that sin helped see. I think they were very real and reality, and only I them to there, they like, okay, it's going on. Because I often get things like, nobody can tell you how you feel, it's your truth. You do you, which isn't entirely wrong. How I feel in a given moment and situation is true and is unique to me and my past experiences and my, ex my life worldview and everything. But... Speaking out of that in a way that does not reflect reality is not helpful for me or for everyone around me. So let's read these last few verses in chapter 3 before kind of like before chapter 21 in Lamentation and kind of see the shift that happens in Jeremiah. So let's start at verse 9. And he says this, He has barred my way with blocks of stone. He has made my paths crooked. Like a, I like a, I, no, like a bear lying in waiting, like a lion in hand. He sharpened the path mangled me and left me without a He drew his bow and made me hide his arrows. He used my heart arrows from his quiver. I gave him laughing stock of all my people. He mocked me all day long. He has me with bitter herbs and given me gall to drink. He, I don't know but it doesn't sound right. Um, he broke my teeth gravel and he trampled me in the path. I forgot what spirit is. So I say, my son, I let hope the law. I remember the question that I wanted to be a girl. I will remember and all this dark has been. He is really, really, and this is just the last verses. He does this for three and a half chapters. He is really, he's not just going, oh, I had a little bit of nice you know, I love my kids. No, 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 he's like, what is it? He has filled me with bitter herbs and has given me gal to drink. He's, maybe I'm reading with him uh, under the but I don't think this is a very nice psalm that he's writing. But then it's when one the shit happens. And he says, yes, this I call to him, and therefore I have hope. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I hope. That to me is, uh, Jeremiah does not stop in verse 20. He does not say all that, in out of his feelings, in a way that does not be reality, and then stops. He does not allow the sharing of those feelings create a false reality based on how he's feeling the moment, based on how he might be based on that day. No. He calls to mind. It is so very tempting 
to do the facade lamentations and moan and moan and be real about your feelings and tell yourself and the people around you what God has done to you. And then stop. And then like, oh, never mind. I'm glad that it's on my chest. Let's go get a drink and I'll feel tomorrow. But Jeremiah does not stop there. Jeremiah says, hey, it's mind. And therefore I have hope because he calls mind. No, because he shed it all and now it's better. Because that's just one side of the glasses. He knows that in order to get a full image of what is going on, he must have the other side. He must put the side aside. I mean, he, he sounds a little bit bipolar when you read even that from 1922. Like, he's on this me, and then this side, my Lord has done this for me, and he is amazing. And, he, and then, are you talking about the same person? Are you the same person just talking now? But he knows the importance of holding mind. He says, this I call to mind, therefore I have hope. He knows the sharing your emotion is important, but not the fear. Not a thing will give him hope. Calling to mind, remembering God's goodness is, is what gives him hope. Not sharing. That's just the first part. I love it, by the way. But in the Bible, it says 352 times to remember. And if you add all the variations of remembering, like call to mind, it, do not forget, number comes to over 550 times. Of 550 times in the Bible, God is reminding us to remember. He's, not, he's telling us, don't forget, remember, call to mind. That is a lot of times. He says to remember his goodness, to remember all he has done for us, to remember all we've been through him by our side. He's telling us to remember because he knows how easily we forget. We, we're a little bit forgetful people, aren't we? It's very easy to forget. Um, I love the, the, the feature on the animal that he sometimes finds random pictures from the past. And on that point, I'm like, oh, Matthew, do you remember when we did this? And you won't surprise my face, no, it didn't. And for that we have the pictures. But our minds is amazing. I mean, our mind may get all that information, but it's easy what it sits through. And what, what we forget, we forget a lot. And unfortunately, we forget a lot of the good. We remember the bad. Very easy to remember the bad. Very easy to talk about the bad. Very easy to share about the bad because they are in You won't believe what that writer did to me when I went to restaurant, blah, 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 blah. But we forget the good way more than we remember the good. And this definition that I found of remembering, um, I think it has. Be able to bring to one's mind an awareness of someone of something from the past. If you're just bringing an awareness of something that has already happened, it's already been, you need to become aware. Become aware of something that has already happened and something that God has already done. Becoming aware of something that God has had to do and done. Because the truth is that we do forget. If you think throughout a year, a calendar year, that's why we have different celebrations and anniversaries and birthdays. And not because... You only celebrate that person or love or whatever, or you only eat pancakes on Tuesday the 13th of February. Because it's a time to kind of block it out. And okay, and this day we run this because we forget easily. But we are creatures of habit and we are creatures that like rituals. Therefore, okay, every year on this day we celebrate this person and we might get him a cake. And that's the way, not because we don't remember and love that person all the time, this is the day to remember them and they were born. How grateful are we they are born? But remembering is important. It is something that we can do by speaking to one another of his goodness, by calling to mind. To recall something to mind, sometimes you actually have to say it out loud, speaking to one another. How many times do we, when we've met with somebody, have we recalled the goodness of God? And how many times have we recalled the bad that is happening? Remembering is important. It's all about making your mind and your senses aware of something that's already there. A few weeks ago, Adam stood right here in this line between earth and paradise. Not earth, earth and paradise. Um, because they are both here all the time, all present. And my awareness of them that changes my perspective rather than going somewhere physically. Because I can face this side and bear my feelings and what everything that I see and touch and able to see and touch. Or I can... but. The, Emotionally and spiritually healthy person is able to stand between two. With one eye here and one eye here, aware of both, holding them both at the same time. It's not about either or, but about both. And the mind was standing in the middle, holding them both increasingly more and more, and not as a one-off, but leaving this place more and more. It's great when it happens a one-off because we listen to an amazing song or someone prayed, but my aim is to be here more and more all the time. My aim is when I sit on the road or when I cook or when I'm in the middle of the night, to nap it. I want to be in that place all the time.
Um, I've been thinking about this verse a lot since Adam died, and he says in Jeremiah, this says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations, because he knew us. He was with us, and we were with him. And we were with him, fully aware of paradise. You, not in this form, not in this body, you were with him, fully aware of paradise. And then we entered this world. And this question came back to me, how much did I forget of that? I was obviously with him. I, not in this body, not in this form, I was with him, and he was with me, and he knew me, and I was aware of paradise. But how much did I forget? And how much must I remember and become aware of him and his presence and enter paradise? I want to remember the time I was with him before I even entered my mother's womb. I want to. And I, I don't think it's impossible. I think he wants me to remember. I think he wants me to be in that place. Remember his goodness. This is the sentence that I keep coming back to the last weeks. It's so easy to remember the bad, to remember what went wrong, to remember who upset us, to remember everything that could have gone a different way. Remembering the good requires a calm to mind. We remember the bad because it's easy. And truth is, there is good. There is so much good in life. There is so much good in my life, in your life, in all around us. There is good in the world. In fact, there is more good in the world than bad if we just open our eyes to it. There is more good in the world than there is bad, but I have to open my eyes to it. Because if I, all I open my eyes to the bad, that's all I will see wherever I go, wherever I, I see, whatever I see. But I want to open my eyes. I want his goodness in my life to think that I remember the thing that I call to mind, the thing that I speak about. And that might start with, I have had, you know, with lament. That's okay. But don't stop lament. Call to mind, therefore you have hope. And this morning, by doing just that, because we did this with the youth, and they were amazing. They went off, and they wrote everything. So I'm, we're going to spend some time coming over both and. And that's the way to enter paradise, the way to see both and hold them at the same time. And it's something that we must do often. But what better time to do than now? So my that is not this morning, has created this beautiful piece of paper that it says, on one side it says, I feel you need to write whatever you feel. Hit the paper, because what I feel, go for it. German three and a half chapters. But on the side it says, yet, this cycle to mind. And sometimes it is so helpful to see them side by side. And it's not seeing them side by side. One does not cancel the other not. You hold them both side by side. I have my help. Thank you. So we're going to spend a little bit of time doing this. But carry on doing it as you go home. You have some extra pieces of paper to take home. Take them. He did this with the youth in their journal. And yeah, it was amazing. Some of them said, yeah, and I wasn't really sure what to, say, to, what to write on the, yeah, this I called to my, but once I started writing, I couldn't stop writing. How beautiful that is, because we are meant to remember. So I think there's some, there's some music. If you feel like you want to stand up and go on sign, please do this. If you want to be, but let's spend a few minutes doing this. I think it'll be very powerful.